Hello, and this is uh, Notcast 142. I can't believe I'm at number 142 already, but I have been doing this for about a year, which is pretty crazy, all things considered. Today, I'm going to do my first unboxing video, which is a terrible thing. Maybe it's a rite of passage when you've got a YouTube channel to do an unboxing of a box set at some point to go, ooh, look at all the things. Well, today we're going to go and look at all the things that come inside the very, very recently released Metallica Black Album Super Mega Duper Deluxe box set. This is not the most expensive box set I've ever bought. The second most expensive box set I've ever bought. And the retail price when this was announced was a staggering £250. Um, as I've said before, keep an eye on retailers. Amazon dipped down to £209 briefly. I ordered it from them. And because I'm a cheapskate, I didn't pay for the uh, expedited delivery. Uh, you get free shipping on Amazon when you pay over £20. This, definitely over £20. So let's have a look inside the box set and see what's happening. First thing, quite exciting really. It's sealed with Metallica branded parcel tape. I could love to have a, a reel of Metallica branded parcel tape, but I don't. And of course, it's a black box because the album is called the black album so here it is i haven't even opened it looked inside it gone through the contents or anything this is very very similar to the other super mega deluxe editions of the sets um, generally a combination of cds lps dvds live shows riffs demos uh, various assorted memorabilia the album itself which no doubt you've already got several times and lots of other formats uh, the black album here is one of the biggest selling albums of all time. It's responsible for a quarter of all Metallica record sales in the history of the known universe. Which means it sold something like 30 million albums? 20 million? It sold a lot of albums, uh, of which I've only owned, uh, I think, two or three copies of that. So let's take the protective PVC out and let's have a look at the beastie itself. So there we are, the Black Album. Hang on a moment. I'll take it out of the box in a minute. This bit won't be dignified. But there it is, remastered. 14 CDs, 6 LPs, 6 DVDs, and so much more. <laughs> so, <clears throat> here we go. Oh my God, this is a heavy thing. Is that a thing people do when they do an unboxing? They talk about the weight of these things? Oh God, it weighs like an engine. This is definitely the heaviest record I've I have. Um, it's an enormous beastie and of course there you get a sneak preview of the shelves which are what I see when I'm doing these videos so I'm gonna have to open this that's the whole point of an unboxing can't believe I've not thought about that before part of me loves to have sealed versions of things it keeps them fresh although what I've heard is that if you have a sealed version of a record actually um, the shrink wrap kind of can shrink as well and sometimes bend and bulge the packaging so let's let's have a look inside here take the seal off <sighs> oh this is exciting isn't it i don't watch other unboxing videos so i have no idea whether this is is good or bad compared to other unboxing videos so one of the things that for me is a really important part of the record always has been always will be is <clears throat> any stickers which you get on them after many years of opening records, I've become an expert at taking stickers off without breaking them. I'm going to worry about that later. So let's read the hype sticker on here. The original Black Album mastered, remastered on 180 gram vinyl and CD. Uh, a picture disc version of Sad But True, the live at Wembley EP, the live in Moscow double LP, two interview CDs, five CDs of demos, six live CDs, six live and behind the scenes DVDs, plus a lyric folder, three lithographs, lanyard, two laminates three guitar picks and a 120 page book see back for full details <clears throat> well this is the track listing i suspect i'm going to be spending an awful lot of time over the next few days listening to these and at some point i'm going to do a uh, kind of review and talk throughs of all the metallic albums the deluxe editions that go with all of those and all the, the various live and concert and EP and single releases that we've got there, but we've got, let's quickly go through here. So we've got the Metallica album, we've got the Sad But True single on picture disc. I'm not sure if it was released on picture disc at the time I bought the CD single. Uh, the Live at Wembley Stadium for the uh, Freddie Mercury show, 
which by the way was uh, only released as the Nothing Else Matters CD single here. Uh, we've got the Live at Toshino Airfield, Moscow, Russia show, uh, one of the early shows off the Monsters of Rock tour. I think the biggest audience that there's ever been for a show, depending on who you ask, is somewhere between 600,000 to one and a half million. The biggest show I've ever been at was Live 8, which was 225,000 people. Uh, the second biggest show was Nebworth uh, for Robbie Williams, not Oasis, because I'm not cool. Uh, then there's the CD of Metallica. There's interviews. There are... Uh, more interviews there's riffs and demos disc one riffs and demos disc two which has mostly full band versions of the songs uh, pre-production rehearsals and radio edits cd7 rough and alternate mixes which if i'm correct features the version of holier than thou that was on the enter sandman 12 inch and not available anywhere else until today cd8 rough and alternative mixes uh, CD9, Day on the Green, Oakland, California, October 12th, 1991. CD10, Arco Arena, Sacramento. So that's three CDs. Uh, and then there's Mannheim on May 22nd, 1993 as well. Then there's DVD1, which is the outtakes from the year and a half in the life of documentary. VHS and DVD. DVD2 is Copenhagen. DVD3, hmm, Nuremberg. DVD4, work to last show of the tour, day after my birthday, not that I went. Um, then DVD5, home movies, and DVD6 is a compilation DVD called Wherever We May Roam, which is taken from the various existing VHS tapes in a dusty vault somewhere. Right, <coughs> here we go. If you've seen Jason Newstead's video of this, I can pretend... That I haven't. That's the only unboxing video I've ever seen. So let's have a look in there. So that sounds like there's a magnet there on the box. Reproduction of the None More Black album cover. And then, oh dear, this thing's a bit of a beastie, isn't it? There we go. So, first things first. We'll just go through this and see how we are. Here is the Black Album. So, there we are. The Black Album. It's on black coloured vinyl. Although black is obviously the default vinyl colour, if it was on coloured vinyl, black should be the colour that the coloured vinyl is on. This is exactly the same, apart from some of the copyright notices, by the way, as the original 1991 LP. My brother had the LP. I recorded it off him. We shared a record collection for a while. Um, and then here is the album itself on Blackened Records. By the look of it, a 2019 remaster, which... I don't think it's been previously released. I bought all the blackened editions of the Metallica albums probably about five or six years ago, uh, and they're all remastered for vinyl on blackened records at that point. But this is a, a new remaster, although to be fair, I don't think you can screw up the mastering on Metallica. Metallica is a fantastically produced album. Uh, what I will say about Metallica is the album is for me it was actually a real disappointment because they made a fantastic rock album but they didn't make a fantastic metallica album because there's things that metallica do that other bands can't do and metallica were doing things that other bands were very good at um so here's the sad but true picture disc very very shiny indeed uh reproduction of the 12 inch picture disc without the barcode on the back the plastic cover is slightly different uh, these singles were about three forty nine at the time they came out. Obviously, a 12-inch picture disc would probably be about £20 these days. Inflation is a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, but it replicates one of the CD singles with the elevator version of Nothing Else Matters. A uh, live version of Creeping Death recorded in Moscow. And the demo of Sad But True recorded on August 13th, 1990. Uh, very faithful reproductions. Here is the, the first relatively new bit of content that we've got live at Wembley Stadium 1992 and as I've said before this is a vinyl debut for the live at Wembley Stadium release because here is the uh, Nothing Else Matters CD single recorded at the Freddie Mercury show it's the same recording as on this um, I think this this was also released on cassette if you went to a Metallica store in 1993 um, but again Seems to be a fairly thick 180 gram vinyl disc, black inner sleeve. Um, yeah, I'm going to enjoy listening to that. In fact, I'm going to enjoy listening to all of this. 
That's not a surprise, because if I wasn't going to enjoy listening to all this, all this why the hell would anyone buy it? So, there's probably somebody somewhere that goes, oh, it's all on Spotify, but you don't own the music on Spotify, and it doesn't last forever. Here is uh, one of the holy grails of Metallica live performances, live at Moscow, August, uh, no, September 28th, 1991. Four songs from this were released on a VHS tape, and it was shot on film, but they couldn't find the film copy of this when they were putting together the archive for this box set, which is why this, which is uh, one of the multi-track recordings from the tour, has been released on LP and not on DVD, by the way. I need to give you a feel for how big that crowd was. Uh, that's absolutely enormous, isn't it? Uh, and if I think correctly, they didn't even... They, had, they only had two video screens. They were quite small there. That is an absolute, that's one of the biggest shows that's ever been played, I think. There was a Toronto show with Rush and Rolling Stones in 2003 that I think was very similar in size. And then after that, uh, it's things like Nebworth. Uh, that would mess with your ego, isn't it? If you're queuing in Asda, you go, why the hell do I have to queue in Asda? I've played to 600,000 people in Moscow. I'm always reminded of uh, what somebody who used to play drums in a very famous band once said when his car broke down, is don't they know who I used to be? Um, here is a, a download code. Oops, better cover that. You can't see that. I'm going to go and download everything off that shortly. So a digital copy of the box set. So you get your vinyl tracks. Uh, let's have a look through the, the various things. This is a Metallica lyric folder, I think, with the lyrics to all but one of the songs on the album. Uh, with reproductions of the, the written lyrics to, let's check, Sad Enter Sandman. Sad but true. Ah, that's nice, isn't it, guys? We spent a fortune on you. So, uh, handwritten lyrics to, yeah. And to Sandman, Sad but true. Holier than thou. The Unforgiven. Wherever I may roam. Don't tread on me. I can't through the never. Nothing else matters. The God That Failed, which, by the way, was covered by Idols on the Blacklist cover versions album, which is very good, uh, and My Friend of Misery. Um, if you probably all haven't already noticed, Metallica really like their doomy, gloomy titles. You know, Even if they do a song about how lovely the night sky is, it would probably be called something like The Blackish Shroud of Night. Uh, so there you go. Uh, OK, so here's some reproduction magazine covers, I'm trying not to bend these as they come out. Um, so we've got RIP magazine, we have got the RIP photo special Metallica tour book with a giant lethal pull-out poster, I'm not sure of the actual fatal qualities of that uh, that poster, and Kerrang magazine, uh, the highlight of many many Wednesdays. I've read every episode of Kerrang magazine up until about 2000. I was a teenage metalhead, and I don't mind saying that because I also loved indie music and dance music. Um, but I absolutely loved metal, and I couldn't afford to buy the magazines. If I did, oh man, I'd love to have a like an archive or a museum of every every Kerrang mag magazine ever because I know I've all read them all. Although, of course. Man, some of those fashions, some of that spandex. Oh, God, it's awful, isn't it? Um, but Kerrang! magazine, I read every issue. Every Wednesday, I'd go to the WH Smiths in town and I'd read it. Here is the book. The blackest book of black things, indeed. 120 pages, not been in here, so I don't know what it is. Here's uh, photographs, text. Ooh, see? People will say, oh, Metallica went rubbish when they lost their hair. Well, frankly, guys, Jason has already shaved his head and given himself a mohawk by the end of the tour. Anyway, so are you going to suggest to me that Metallica lost it when Jason cut his hair? Uh, absolute nonsense. Anyway, a book full of colour photographs of things, black and white photographs. Uh, oh god, all that hair. It's I'm just jealous, really. And here we go into the CDs and the DVDs. I'll show you what the, uh, the box looks like. Effectively, you've got four quite deep pockets full of those. So here we have uh, the Metallica album in a vinyl replica 
sleeve, although the original obviously didn't come in a gatefold, so here's the first gatefold edition of the album. Uh, let's have a quick look in here and see if it's got inner sleeves. I bet it has. Actually, I should have remembered to do that whilst I had them here. Uh, yeah, so we've got in it, we've got booklets, and we've got uh, Metallica inner sleeve and a poly bag, and the CD itself. CD two, the David Frick tapes, interviews with all the band members, and the Stefan Shirazi tapes as well. Again, Gate Folds. I only ever listen to these once. I'd much rather have music than interviews. Um, here is the uh, the riffs and demos and stuff selection. So we've got what looks to be 32 riff tapes and then 16 demos on CD2, pre production rehearsals and radio edits. So we've got pre production versions. And demo versions and rehearsal versions of various tracks, plus a number of radio edits as well. Next bunch, uh, rough and alternate mixes. Now, when you do rough and alternate mixes, obviously they're, they're works in progress uh, and they're saved and kept, but they're not designed necessarily to be listened to. Not everything that the band has ever recorded or done as a mix is, is on these, uh, and that's quite right because if you've ever listened to I think, where is it now? Those Leaks, Guns and Roses demos from Chinese Democracy. And you end up with 16 versions of a song. And the only thing that's different is the guitar solo. So you've got 16 different guitar solos, the first minute and a half. It's really boring listening to all of those. Um, so what they've tried to do is cherry pick the most useful and interesting versions and alternate takes of the songs. So at least you've got something alternative to listen to. Um, yeah, at this point, the band were a fairly big machine. They were recording mostly everything that they did. Uh, at the very least, they put a VHS tape into the machine at the at the mixing desk, so they yeah, would get a recording of the sound and they get a recording of the video. Um, but obviously, sometimes they forgot to change the tapes over, or a section they did a section of the show, for example, normally when the Justice medley happened, they weren't filming it. So there, there are circulating bootleg recordings of those tours uh, from the mixing desks, which don't have. The video screen feed for the justice songs because they didn't film the justice songs they gave the cameramen uh, a loo and fag break because that was 10 minutes long and the shows were about three hours so this is uh the day on the green show at oakland california october 12th 1991 it uh, doesn't have into sandman on i'm not sure they remember to press record for all of these shows and all of these songs so, uh, especially when it comes to the videos, you'll get to the last DVD, which is a compilation of Wherever We May Roam, and you'll notice some omissions in that, and you think, well, why is, is that not on there? Well, they forgot to turn the tape over because they were too busy making sure that the, you know, the sound was coming out. Running a tape of it was a, kind of like a second-hand thing. This is a three-CD of the band at the Arco Arena, Sacramento, California, January the 11th, 1992. So what it sees there's actually no duplication whatsoever between this black album box set and the uh, the live ship box set which came out in 1994. In fact, there's three CDs in there. Better check that there are three CDs. Uh, it looks like yes, there's two CDs in the second case. My iTunes is going to love me. It's going to be like you've never fed so much stuff into me. What are you doing, Mark? Well, there we go. So that's the. Uh, that's some of the CDs. Let's go through another another selection of the CDs. This is a Beastie here. Uh, this is Mannheim, Germany, May 22nd, 1993, right towards the end of the tour. Uh, and I think the selection has been made so that you've got a varied selection of set lists from across the tour. The only part of the tour that isn't really covered in any substantial way is the 1992 Guns N' Roses Stadium Tour, which is covered in the Year and a Half DVD. Uh, year and a Half has not been released in the UK, by the way. So what's somewhat odd is that this is the this sees the release of the outtakes as, as Region 2 DVDs, but Year and a Half has only been available as a DVD in the US. Uh, and here's the Year and a Half in the Life of Metallica outtakes. Thankfully, YouTube can provide you with everything, so I've just downloaded the Year and a Half off YouTube. Um, here we go with the, the, the last few discs we've got in here. Again, quite a selection. This is uh, Copenhagen, August 10th, 1991, and uh, on DVD, and a bonus stuff of about 10 or 11 extra songs recorded at various tour stops. 
cover versions with guests. Uh, so, for example, I think Diamond Head appear on Am I Evil? And there's uh, Helpless as well, both recorded at the NEC in Birmingham on November the 5th, 1992. My brother went to that. I didn't go to that. I made a decision and I was wrong to not go to that show. Um, and then the Stone Cold Crazy, which is, by the look of it, recorded at Wembley Arena. Uh, those three songs, I think, were on the first ever Metallica fan cam, which was a VHS tape, a T-shirt, a lanyard and a CD. Then here's uh, Nuremberg, November 29th, 1992, DVD. The reason these are on DVD and not on Blu-ray is that they were recorded onto uh, VHS tapes. So th there's no there's no point putting a Blu-ray out because all you're really doing is using up extra storage capacity and space when the quality just isn't there to start with. Uh, of course, there are some people who go, why didn't they film every show with you know multiple cameras uh, and put it onto film in, in 70 millimeter? And that's like, that stuff is expensive. And it's expensive even if you're in a Brazilian selling band like Metallica. Uh, this is the, the last show of the tour. Work to Festival, Belgium, July 4th, 1993. Uh, and then there's a second DVD that has the videos, making of the videos, and Russ Halfin, uh, Ross Halfin home movies. This is the Wherever We Were Roam. Uh, 26 show compilation taken from the rest of the band's archives. So it's a full tour set list compiled chronologically going through the tour in order. Starting at uh, Nimmergen in the Netherlands on September the 1st, 1991 and ending with So What, the, I think the last song of the tour recorded at work. To, so you do get a repeat from there. Then there's another couple of other bits and bobs. I think you get some kind of Metallica lanyard thingy. I'm not quite sure why they bother putting that in there. And then also we have uh, some reproduction guitar picks. Uh, we have, I think, some snake pit passy type things. Here's a access, all areas access stadium tour thing. Here's a Metallica uh, 1993 tour pass. This is a 1991 tour pass from the ACDC and Metallica co-headline Monsters of Rock tour. And then there's the wherever I may roam, 1992 one. And to make sure that tour passes weren't duplicated or copied or sold on, you had your photograph on there to make sure that no naughty people pretended to be someone that they weren't. Uh, and then there's the guitar picks. That is the Metallica Black Album unboxing. That's quite a beastie, isn't it? I should remember how all these bits fit together. So let's see if I can put them back in some kind of vague semblance of order. Naturally, I will get this wrong. <coughs> but there's a lot of material on here. I haven't looked up exactly how many there are, but there must be hundreds of songs on here. Uh, almost all of which have been previously unreleased. There was a, in the singles, they did the demo versions on the CD singles. The elevator version of Nothing Else Matters is on one of the, uh, one of the releases as well. Um, and then there's the some cover versions which they used as b-sides which are on here you know maybe aside from the album itself maybe 10 songs 12 songs have been previously released uh, Moscow was the default album of choice for a number of the uh, b-sides that they used and they used a lot of live b-sides throughout this period uh, but again Moscow is getting a final release for the first time uh, that's quite a beastie there i'm going to be spending an extremely long time watching that and putting that into my uh, various dvds and cd players uh, what i will have to say is it's not fully comprehensive because a fully comprehensive version with absolutely everything that metallica recorded during this period would be incredibly long it would have something like 200 shows in it uh, because they recorded most of most of the shows. And the reason that they've chosen the shows that they have, and obviously not the shows that they haven't, is because of tape flips, breaks, uh, technical issues. Uh, maybe the, the tape got dusty and mouldy in a box, I'm not sure. But that is the, the Metallica Black Album Super Mega Ultra Duper set. If you love Metallica um, and you've got money... This is almost like a museum in a box. And there's very little duplication between this and the single B-sides uh, and absolutely nothing that's on the live shit 
Binge and Purge 1994 box set. And Live Ship, by the way, has um, a show at Mexico, San Diego and Seattle from 1989. Um, and Seattle 1989 is available as a vinyl edition in the Justice for All box set, which I'll talk about when I talk about Justice for All. Uh, but Mexico and San Diego are not on here at all. So um, there's lots and lots and lots of new stuff in here. Um, it's This is a definitive edition. You know, if you're in a band and you're doing a box set, this is how box sets really, really should be done. Um, and, well, there we are. Now, somewhere on here, there's a number. I don't know which number they are. I think the, the release of this goes up to 52,000, uh, which is an enormous amount for a box set of this size and cost. But there is nobody that does single album focus box sets quite as comprehensively as Metallica. That's your unboxing for Metallica Black Album. Fantastic rock album. Not a fantastic Metallica album. Uh, one that I, I've spent many years listening to. Um, but when I talk through the Metallica discography in full uh, over the, the coming months, I perhaps will pass my opinion about the record. And I'll go through the singles and the 12 inches and the 7 inches and the picture discs and all the other bits and bobs that there are. I'm going to spend some time with this now. So it's going to take me approximately a year to get through to listen to everything that's on here. I'm really looking forward to it. I will see you all again soon. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Stay beautiful and uh, I'll see you later. Bye.